Hi everyone, welcome to the first video that I'm filming in our new flat, which I'm so excited about. It feels like ages since I sat down and spoke to the camera, so I'm feeling quite rusty, but it's only actually been two weeks. And last week, you will have seen a video from me that was pre-recorded, so for you, it's not as if I've been gone at all. But for me, the past two weeks have been full of work and then also moving decorating, been doing a lot of decorating. I knew there was a reason I own so many pairs of dungarees. They've come in handy. Um, and now I'm gonna sit down and talk to you about the books that I read in January. I'll show you some of the flat and some of the decorating that I've been doing in a video that will go up in a week or so. I'm still trying to figure out where is the best place to film. My bookcases are over there, which is quite far away from the light. So for now, I'm filming in front of my wardrobe. We've got some plants, there are some books, but they're out of shot up there on the mantelpiece so I'll figure it out as time goes on but as I said today I want to talk to you about the books that I read in January it was quite a mixed bag so let's start with the audiobooks so that I don't forget them I'm going to quickly mention them because they were rereads re-listens I really wanted to listen to new audiobooks while I was painting because as I said I've been doing a lot of decorating but then I just really wanted to re-listen to the Frida Klein series I literally just finished listening to the eighth book and I just went straight back to the beginning and I regret nothing. I won't bore you by talking about them again because I've spoken about them a lot recently but I'm enjoying them just as much the second time round. It's about a um, psychotherapist called Frida Klein who gets involved in lots of crime cases. The first book is called Blue Monday. It's a husband and wife writing duo. Their pen name is Nikki French. The audiobooks are narrated by Beth Chalmers. They are brilliant. So that's all I've listened to on audiobook. In January, I have these books here to talk to you about as well. So the first one that I read was The Christmas Egg by Mary Kelly. This is one of the British crime classics. I read The Santa Claus Mystery in December and really loved it. Unfortunately, I didn't like this one at all. This is about a Russian princess who was exiled, ran away to London, became a recluse, was then robbed and murdered. And it's about the policeman who's trying to solve the crime. However, it is so overwritten. It is clumsy, it became immensely frustrating. I kept thinking, I'm going to get into the rhythm of this and then it's going to be fine. But it just kept grating on me. Let me give you an example of what I mean. Magendi was an old fox as well as a hamster. All that blinking, that exaggeratedly fragmented, dated, effectively preserved manner of speaking, all of it offence to baffle the casual observer from a glimpse of his cunning, even ruthless pursuit of business. It was like a false limb in the use of which he had from long practice grown so proficient that it was literally second nature. Mm. <laughs> it was just not for me, unfortunately, this writing style. And the plot was not that great either. So I loved the first one I read, didn't love this one so much, and I have others on my TBR, which I will get to in due course. This book was one that I DNF'd, and it is called Circus by Claire Battershill. This is a short story collection, and for me, it had almost the opposite problem of A Christmas Egg, in the sense that the writing in this is so simple. Simple writing can be wonderful. If it's blunt, it can be used to great effect. For me, it has to be weighted down by something else. If the writing is not lyrical, if it's been stripped back so much, you need the punch to come elsewhere, or the twist, or that poetry to materialise in other ways. And for me, that just didn't happen. So the stories in here felt a little weightless. So because of that, I read a few stories from the collection and then decided I was just going to move on to something else because it wasn't for me. And the thing that I moved on to instead, I really must get a table so I'm not just darting in and out of frame, sorry. The thing that I moved on to was Salt Slope by Julia Armfield. Um, as I mentioned in my New Year's resolution video, I have lots of short story collections on my shelves and I haven't got to them as often as I have meant to. So I'm trying to read one short story collection no, one short story every day so that I make my way through the short story collections on my shelf. And this was definitely more my cup of tea. Let me read you a couple of phrases that I've underlined. We are all of us peculiar, 
frizzy haired and sweaty in our woolen blazers, smelling thickly of the things girls come to smell of when they are removed from the company of men. Mulling vaguely on a memory of swallowing my first milk tooth with a mouthful of apple, of asking my mother whether I might now start growing teeth along the lining of my stomach like the blooming of a seed. There were lots of stories in here that I really fell in love with, some not so much, that's always the case with short story collections. My favourite short story in this was was about a young girl whose father remarried and the person that he remarried had a pet wolf who she treated like a daughter and these two daughters the wolf and the girl go feral together and I thought that that was explored in such a subtle and moving way. One thing I did want to quickly highlight is that many people had recommended this book to me because it deals heavily with the body. So when I was reading the short stories, I had expected disfigurement and disability to be the main themes of this book, just based on what other people had said to me, not based on the book and the blurb and the way that it was selling itself. Um, so just in case anybody else was also thinking that was gonna be the case, it's not really. Disfigurement is looked at in this book but often as a means to discuss otherness in general um, and I'm all for talking about disfigurement through magical realism and fairy tale you know that I do that myself but just in case you thought that this book um, had real life lived experience of disability and disfigurement it doesn't so much however I really do recommend it um, and I think that her writing is absolutely stunning. Another book that I read in January was one that I revisited because I was reviewing it for Toast and that is Elizabeth's Lists by Lula Ellender. This was one of my favourite books of 2019 so if you would like to read my in-depth thoughts I will link my written review in the description box down below and if you would like to talk to us about your list making habits, your resolutions for 2020 or talk to us about this book if you've read it already then do so underneath that article and you will be entered into a giveaway that's run by Toast to win a copy of the book that I'm reviewing for them this month in February which is The Godchild by Nana Aforiata I am and I'm really looking forward to getting to this one. In January I also read the newly translated Earthlings by Siaka Murata which has been translated from the Japanese by Ginny Tapley Takamori. This isn't out until October so I'll only talk about it briefly. Um, she wrote this before Convenience Store Woman, which was her first book to be translated into English, but I think it was her 10th novel in Japanese. This book has a similar feel to Convenience Store Woman, which was one of my favourite books of last year. In that book, the main character, Kiko, feels as though she is foreign in her own country. She feels as though she doesn't understand how humans operate and relies very heavily on the handbook given to her at work in order to know how to interact with people on a daily basis. The characters in Earthlings fall into that category as well but they've been pushed further away by society they've been so badly treated by humanity that they no longer want to associate with humans at all in fact the main characters Natsuki and Yu who are cousins have made themselves believe that they are from outer space it opens and it feels very spirited away like Natsuki is being driven by her parents to her cousin Yu's house in the countryside up this winding road and it feels as though they're going to this magical place away from um, real life. It is a disturbing book, trigger warnings for child abuse. I would describe it as if The Dumb House by John Burnside had a book baby with The Vegetarian by Han Kang. I think it's going to be a novel that really divides people but I think it's brilliant. It evolves into something else entirely by the end which really reflects what's going on inside the book itself. I thought that it was great. Speaking of John Burnside, I also read The Devil's Footprints in January. This is the third novel by him that I have read. I adore The Dumb House, as you know. I quite enjoyed Glister. I love, love, love his poetry, but this novel felt quite flat to me. It felt directionless unfortunately. This is the book that we picked to read for our quarterly Patreon book club. Patreon is a place where you can tip your favourite creators and you can unlock extra content like the book club that I run every quarter. So I'm going to be making a video over on Patreon talking about 
my in-depth thoughts on this book. So if you would like to hear those, I will link Patreon down below. But yeah, this was not one of my favorites and I have many other books by him on my shelf. So I'm really hoping to discover a book that I love as much as The Dumb House. Finally, in January, I read half of this short story collection, which is That Thing Around Your Neck by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. I will talk about the contents of this book at the end of February when I finished reading it, but I just wanted to highlight how ridiculous it is that I haven't read her before now. I have most of her books sitting on my shelves and I've read articles by her and short stories, just never a whole book. Chimamanda for me is someone who I've always thought of as an author I'm going to love and I know I'm going to love her books and therefore for some reason in my head that means that there's no rush in getting to them because they're, they're there and they're waiting for me and I have spent more time trying to unearth hidden brilliance in other places, you know, books I haven't heard people talk about as much instead of just reading the books that I know I'm going to love. Why do we do that? I don't understand. Anyway, I'm certainly going to get to her other books quicker than I've got to this one um, and I'll speak about this as I said at the end of February. So those are all the books that I read in January. I will link them all in the description box down below if you would like to go and check them out. Have you read any of these? Would you like to? Let me know what you read in January in a comment down below and I will speak to you guys very soon. Lots of bookish love. Bye.